exactly. Aduji, so why would you want to still continue with this demonstration? It's been the notification being given a couple of days now, and just a day to this demonstration, it looks like the key stakeholders are saying that, well, this the audit is needed, but also a demonstration could be avoided, Aduji. Okay, so you see, <clears throat> if you look at the 1992 constitution, it has essentially three underlining principles. One, probity. Two, accountability. Three, transparency. Now, the Electoral Commission, being a creature of the Constitution, must subject its activities to these constitutional principles. Nothing more, nothing else. I have heard people say that the Electoral Commission, by law, is independent. The Electoral Commission is not independent from transparency, accountability, and probity. Now, the NDC, having carefully examined the voters' register, came out with five heads of discrepancies. Now, first of all, the NDC wrote to the Electoral Commission requesting for a meeting and to demonstrate that our request is not frivolous or vexatious, what we did was to further request that the whole process should have the media present. So we requested for additional live coverage of the event. Now my understanding is that the media, being the fourth estate of the rep, will be permitted to broadcast the whole thing to Ghanaians. So that if the claims by the NDC were not proper, the whole Ghana will see the NDC for whatever it's worth. Strangely, strangely, the Electoral Commission rejected the media presence. And strangely, the media never raised an issue about it. But that's another Isn't matter. Isn't the purview of the Electoral Commission no, you see, to either again, have a live no, coverage No, no, no. Again, I talked about the issues of transparency. The Electoral Commission itself has one of its claims that it wants to have a transparent election. And we ask you that allow the media presence no. Then we went there. During the questioning, it became obvious by the skill set and the IT expert that we took there that they were huge discrepancies with the register. And I'll give you a classic example. When we raised the issue of Tamale Central, 25 people having their voters' identities and everything transferred to Pusiga, hmm? listen carefully, to Pusiga without their consent, the Electoral Commission found merit in that claim and proceeded to suspend its own district director there. Now the question is, if it is possible for 25 people to have their voter identity records transferred from one constituency in Northern Region to another one in Upper East, it tells you the extent to which the IT system of the Electoral Commission can be subject to or the whatever. And we have also identified hmm, that over 15,000 people have had their identities and others, either one way or the other, compromised. Over 200,000 people having issues with their voter identities. When we raised these issues to the Electoral Commission, they in fact admitted that yes, there may be issues. However, the Electoral Commission comes to tell us that they have internally resolved the problem. Now my question is, how do you tell whether these issues have in fact been resolved? So what have we demanded from the EC? A simple request for audit. So that's why you have to hit the streets? I'm coming there. A simple request for audit. When we made this request for audit, instead of the Electoral Commission, how much will it cost you to do this audit? How many days will it take you to do, to do this audit? In fact, this past week that we've been going back and forth would have been done with the audit. And I say this, in 2015, 
The NPP came out with a claim that there were 75,000 Togolese on the voters register. You recall Dr. Mahmoud Bahamia. So we said, ah, if you know the 75,000 people who are Togolese, produce the name so that we could have the names deleted while they are Togolese. He said, no. Then they now started a call for a new voters register on the basis of that 75,000 they claim to be Togolese on the register. When that claim came, J uh, Charlotte said, you know what she did? She set up a five-member eminent committee chaired by the respected and distinguished jurist, Azukra. And Justice VCRC uh, VC Crab. So they went through all that process and produced a report. What the report indicated was that one, the claim for a new voters register was not convincing. However, the demand for an audit was proper. And so, Madame Charlotte said, permitted all stakeholders to help in auditing the voters register that brought Akufado to power. The request the NDC is making today is not different. The only problem is that you have a situation where the current electoral commission and the commissioners do not see the, the security of tenure provided them by the constitution. They rather see that they can only remain in office as commissioners with an MPP government. You know why? Why? Why do you draw that conclusion? Good. If you do state that they have a security of tenor. Exactly. So I... Are you a lawyer? Yes. Because Akufuado did something that nobody had done before. In fact, at the bar conference, the bar, the outgoing bar president, my senior Yabwafo, made a, an interest. He said, look, it is only Afarijan who one day is an MPP. Tomorrow he's NDC, and that is how we have been going with Afarijan until he went on retirement. But the Akufado did the unthinkable in removing Shalotose. And when Akufado removed Shalotose, it became a message to the current commissioners that the Constitution's guarantee of security of tenure is not enough. All you need is a reckless president, and you are gone. And so because of that, the current crop of commissioners believe that as long as MPP is in power, that is what provides them security of tenor and not the constitution. And you know something, I, I will conclude on this, just 30 seconds. It's not far-fetched. No. If you have a situation where, if you have a situation what where- What you are saying is not far-fetched. Far I'll tell you. If you have a situation where Madame Jane Mensah, okay, recruit two IT consultants. One, Dr. Yao Ofori AJ. Two, Yaquachi. And like I pointed out, Yaquachi is the son of Anfo Kwachi. Anfo Kwachi was the personal assistant of Mr. Akufuado. Now listen, these are people who have access to the Electoral Commission database. We do not know what the login protocols are, how you can enter, how you can exit, how you do it. And look, this is a very crucial election. <laughs> An election where destinies will be determined. And you have a known MPP person handling the IT infrastructure beyond Apiahine, who myself and other NDC communicators have debated on platforms like this today. I'm with this man. He's an MPP communication member. Tomorrow I wake up and he's an electoral commissioner. And you say that I should be comfortable. I should go and sleep because he's Angel Gabriel, a woo. And I want to use this platform to urge all Ghanaians, urge all Ghanaians, that tomorrow, let us all come in our You still numbers. want to go ahead with the demonstration? Have you heard Professor Kofi Abuchi, the dean of the faculty or the law school of UPSA, the point he makes? He said, listen, what is wrong? How, what harm will it cause EC if you audit the process? Okay. What harm?
uh, the Electoral Commission has not been able to provide mm. any justification for refusing. Okay, Mr. Bobby, what do you make? What do you make of this?